Hey, beautiful friends, Teresa Lusk here. I am bringing you the very last gift that's listed in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And so let's look at it real briefly. Um, don't forget to go back and read in your word, study the gifts, it's important. If you're part of the body of Christ, you really need to know what the Bible says so that you can begin to fulfill that call. Don't leave that call to your pastor or your, the prophet in your church, the apostle or the, the grandmother who's been serving in the church for years. You rise up and ask the Lord to use you mightily in his work. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I'm going to start at verse 10. It says, To another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, meaning discerning of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. So the Bible talks about that the greatest gift is love. So above all these gifts, my friends, number one, we must seek after being loving. We must pour out the love of God. We must live out the, the love of God. We must be real with ourselves in the area where we lack love. I mean, I, I'm, I can be honest with you and tell you that there are some areas in my life where love doesn't necessarily uh, manifest so easily. Uh, there are certain uh, things that could come at me pretty easily and, and keep me from allowing that love to pour out. But as we seek to do ministry, to, to live in the body of Christ and to be the body of Christ, you are supposed to love the gift of love more first and foremost. That's the one we have to pursue above everything. Now, because of that scripture that, that, that love is the greatest of all these gifts, people have tried to diminish the, uh, the gifts, the gift of prophecy and the gift of the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, all that. They try to say, well, you don't need to pursue anything. You just need to pursue the Lord. Actually, um, we're supposed to zealously pursue the gift of prophecy. If we're going to be looking for gifts, that's the one we're supposed to zealously pursue. Doesn't mean it's the only one we should pursue, but that's the one we should zealously pursue because it builds up the church. So it doesn't mean that we don't pursue the other things. It doesn't mean that if you have a, a, a just a passion and a leaning towards um, the gift of the working of miracles, that you should avoid, you know, that you should avoid it because you're told to zealously pursue prophecy. It doesn't mean that, my friends. It just means that, you know, sometimes we get to pursuing the wrong things. And so, so the Apostle Paul was saying, listen, there's something that builds up everybody, and that's the gift of prophecy. The other thing that's very close to the gift of prophecy, if not equal to, is the gift of tongues with interpretation. So that's what we're talking about today, the gift of interpretation. You know, it, it, God didn't intend for us whenever there's corporate ministry. I'm not talking about when you're in your prayer closet or when you're praying in tongues in your car, or when you're in a church service and you're getting your worship on and things of that nature and you're praying in tongues. I'm talking about when you demand the audience to give you attention because you have a word to say in tongues. When you have a word to say in tongues, we are told that we are to pray for the interpretation or someone else should have the interpretation or we just sit down, meaning we don't demand and command the attention of an audience. If you do, that means that you will have an interpretation or the Lord will. So what is it for? It's so that you'll know what the Lord is saying. He didn't intend for you to run around blindly. The church has the Spirit of God. We have relationship with God. We have access to God. So therefore, we're, we don't walk in, in, in darkness. We don't walk with our eyes shut off. So that's why it's important to have the interpretation. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing that you can have. It, it allows you to also learn to become acquainted with God's power and who He is. Um, and also the interpretation, by the way, I think a lot of times we might expect that, that when we hear a tongue, I've been in a few services where someone will rise up and they'll just begin to speak in a tongue out loud and uh, either they or someone else will give the interpretation. I've given the interpretation before and it's not always a phrase in our, in our, about our, our, you know, like a common phrase. Uh, there's even been an interpretation of, of a poem, like the, it was a poem that God had given to uh, the congregation. 
Sometimes we want to put God in a box, my friends. We want to, we want him to speak the way that we're comfortable. We want to speak, we want him to say things in the way that we would receive them. And while he does, he's still not a God in the box. So we can't demand that to always happen. So the gift of interpretation of tongues, it's a beautiful thing. It, like I said, it's, it's just like prophecy when, when tongues has interpretation. God uses it to, uh, to comfort you, exhort you, um, to just build you up. And we need that as the corporate body. We need that as individual members of the body of Christ, and we need it as the whole body, the corporate body. My friends, this is the last one of the gifts that I'm talking about from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. If you've not watched the rest of our videos, please go back and find them because they're just small snippets of the gifts but it, I pray that it's enough to ignite your fire. That if you've not uh, ever heard much about the gifts, that you go and you research it. Or that if you know some, that you go deeper in studying it so that you begin to operate in the gifts. Remember this, the Lord can use any of them. Some of us have, have uh, been taught in the church that uh, you can only operate in one or two. The, the Lord will use whichever one however many he needs for his purpose. So don't put yourself in a box and more than, than, more than anything, don't put the Lord in a box. May God richly bless you.